uh, back to the point of uh, pouring gasoline on stuff, I mean, it, it had a method to the madness. There was a reason for it, okay? Hello, I'm not a chemist and welcome to this spicy episode where we succeed at getting crystals from chilies but fail at doing it well. Alright, but why are we doing this? I mean, we can do it, so we, we just do it, I guess. But, but let's just think of a fake problem that we can solve. Like, I really need accurate measurements of how much spice there's in my food when I cook it. You know, like I make food and I don't know how spicy it is. So I want to have the, the pure spiciness distilled so I can measure it or something. Let's, let's go with that. That's a good reason, right? All right, so with this madness out of the way, so how do we get the capsaicin? Like we agreed we're taking capsaicin from out of chilies. That's what we're doing in this video, if it wasn't clear until now. Anyway, how do we do that? Uh, well, capsaicin is very soluble in ethyl acetate. So we'll just use a soxet extractor and use ethyl acetate and chili powder. Uh, we'll use Carolina Reaper for that because so, it's like very spicy, big concentration. So bigger chance of getting something at the end of it all. And we'll worry about recrystallizing and purifying later. Like f first let's get the, the, the extract. So anytime you extract something using a solvent, you want to like increase the surface area of the source like drastically as much as possible and no exceptions here so I, I tried using mortar and pestle and i didn't feel like doing that so i just used my one and only coffee grinder and pulverized like 15 grams of carolina reaper chilies in it and that was a terrible terrible idea don't use your food grade stuff for chemistry experiments i had to drink spicy coffee for like a week after this and i actually i did clean the, the grinder like as, as much as possible. I didn't wash it because I didn't want to make it wet, but I, I should have, I should have washed it or done something with it. It was insane. And like spicy coffee, not good. All the taste is just gone and it's just spicy and it's bad. Okay, we have this cough inducing powder. So now we can just prepare the, the extractor itself. The Soxlet extractor consists of these three parts. Really cool little device. I mean, I guess the flask is part of it. So you put a solvent in the flask and you put this middle section on top of the flask. And like this, you put the dry material inside of this middle section here. And uh, the, the solvent, you heat it up, it evaporates via this tube going up, up, up. And it enters the, the middle chamber and there is this condenser on top that I didn't mention before. And it just basically cools down the solvent and it drops on top of the solid matter. And that's how it dissolves it. And it, uh, the, the level of the solvent goes up, 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 up until it fills up to the level of this little siphon tube here. And basically now it, it's, a, it's a siphon, it's a toilet. It just flushes down the, the extracted material back into the flask that is full of a solvent. Uh, now you're heating the solvent again and it just goes pure solvent. It goes up the tube again and this condenses again on top of the material and it fills up and then it siphons off again and the toilet just keeps flushing extract. And it's all good because you're reusing the same solvent. Yeah, it just works. So it's great. I also put this um, cotton balls around the... the the material the bottom one is actually the, cr the critical one because you don't want any of the material going into the siphon tube and going back into the extract or just clogging the thing because it's not easy to clean either so just you know avoid clogging it anyway it's it's obvious right put a cotton ball in there it's all good put the solid material on top and then put another cotton ball on top just so that to avoid splashing over there and you can actually see how good ethyl acetate is it is just extracting chili stuff because Look at how orange it gets immediately at room temperature. Here I'm just pouring room temperature extract on top just to see that the siphon is working and everything. And that's how I just filled the flask. I also use way too much solvent. Don't use like, this much solvent. It it's completely negates the, the purpose of a Soxlet extractor. You don't need this much solvent. So after this, I just put the, the condenser on top and flushed it with water and then heated up the the solvent and extracted the whole thing for like four or five times or whatever you're just looking for for the thing to be clear after this like the solvent should be clear and, and then you know you're doing fine and also like if if you're heating too much you know like it just starts going up really fast that's not good like first of all it's too hot second of all it, it just fills up too fast so there is no time for the solvent to dissolve anything here i had to adjust it so you see how how 
weird it looks when it's too hot like it just starts skipping up the the tube and so the, i lowered the heat here yeah use less heat now socket extractor is all nice and dandy but it's it's actually an expensive piece of, of glassware and i had to wait for it arrive here from the glorious republic of china so it, it, it takes a long time it costs a lot of you know more money than you'd expect and um you can completely negate it in this situation you, you just don't need it all you need is a bottle of solvent and just drop your powder in there uh, with ethanol you probably need to leave it for at least a week i'd say and also probably away from sunlight so it doesn't hydrolyze or some something like that uh so but, but it, it will just work perfectly fine you wait for a week you you then filter it and you're fine and you can use ethanol for that I mean, you can use any solvent outside of the socket, socket extractor as well. You can use ethyl acetate, as you can see, like it takes probably a few minutes just to, to get anything. Using ethyl acetate, you probably don't need to leave it for more than a few hours just to, be, to make sure. Now, it's also important to note that if you just want to cook with this stuff, then you're done at this step. Like you, all you needed was the extract. You can concentrate it, you can evaporate the, the solvent if you want. And you can even like evaporate all of it and remain with the with the oils, but you don't need to extract or crystallize anything beyond this. You just put this in your food and you you measure how how spicy it is. I mean, that's the thing though, right? You still don't have the pure spiciness uh, extracted here, so it's mixed with carotenoids and and oils like vegetable oils. So you don't know what the concentration is. If you just extracted this from sweet peppers you you might get like the same amount of oils but it won't be spicy at all so it's still very hard to measure so i want the crystals i want the pure white or like it's not gonna be white here yeah, let's have lower expectations than that let's call it yellow science uh so yellow waxy powder crystals that that are spicy and you can measure and say this is gonna be this spicy right all right, enough, enough of this nonsense. So the next step, we want crystals. So we want to somehow get them to separate from the, the oils. And, and we're, fo we're gonna follow a procedure now because I, I found one online. And um, this is where I, I realized that I screwed up. The, 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 we're going to make saponification happen now. Because I found this procedure that says you, 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 you make saponification happen and then you you adjust the pH and then you just let it crystallize and it kind of just separates from, from the fatty acids and the soap that you've basically created from the oils. And um, as, as the more observant of you might have noticed, ethyl acetate is not great to make saponification happen inside of because you use like a strong base to do that. And a strong base will just react with the ethyl acetate to produce some other acetate and ethanol. Like if you use sodium hydroxide, as I'm going to, you're just producing sodium acetate, which is a food additive. It's fine, but like we don't want it in there. And ethanol, which is also fine, but like we don't want it there. Well, I mean, we do actually, as, as it turns out later, but not now. Uh, so yeah, I had to basically evaporate the, the thing. So not only did I use a lot of solvent, I had to now get rid of it because I didn't feel like distilling it. So I just evaporated like 400 or something milliliters of uh, ethyl acetate over, uh, I don't know, a few hours outside. So it was fine. It, it just smelled like the entire neighborhood was uh, simultaneously removing uh, nail polish from their fingernails. It, it, it's, we, I don't like the smell. All right. Uh, but again, uh, the procedure. Yeah. Saponification. I used 10% uh, sodium hydroxide solution and I... Uh, added that until it stopped being a liquid soap because of course it just reacted with the oils and everything so it became this gelatinous mess um, so I diluted it a little bit more and then left it for four hours because that's what the procedure said to do so I just left it there to saponify and then I adjusted uh, so first of all I, I lowered the temperature to like five degrees and I adjusted the pH to seven and I'm I was supposed to leave it for two hours after this to crystallize but instead of crystallizing it just crashed out of solution uh, as a precipitate and uh, that failed and you know like this was as as uh, I might have alluded to uh, with my with my channel name I'm not a chemist so this was my first ever attempt at recrystallization and uh, it failed but i'm fine with that it's a little bit annoying but it's fine 
but I decided that I'm not gonna try this because it didn't make a lot of sense to me to do it in like such a big amount of aqua solution. Uh, I felt like I didn't have much control over the variables. So I decided to, to try another procedure. Which at this point, like after so many evaporations and, uh, you know, failed recrystallizations or whatever, and, you know, so much time in water, hydrolysis starts happening. I was losing material here and I knew it, but I was still hoping that I can get some, right? So uh, actually first I, I vacuum filtered what I had because the precipitate was actually large enough to be stuck in, in filter paper. Also, I was hoping, uh, I don't know if I got all of it, but it was mostly clear after I was done. So I hope I got all of it. Uh, the solution was mostly clear. And um, I had these four pieces of filter paper just filled to the brim with fatty acids and like waxy dust of capsaicin. It smelled very pungent, so I definitely knew there was something left in the very pungent smell. It made me sneeze a lot, that's for sure. And then after a few days of uh, not doing anything, it was time to basically try and recrystallize this again. But this time I decided to follow a procedure which included uh, trying to get rid of the color. This procedure I found was was betting on the difference of relative solubility of the oils in, in ethanol versus like non-polar solvents like hexanes or just petroleum ether. So since capsaicin very readily dissolves in ethanol, uh, it would uh, if you put that like you dissolve it in ethanol but also try to dissolve the oils in hexanes or, or something like that then Theoretically, they would basically dissolve in the thing that they like more and you can then separate them. And you can separate uh, hexanes from ethanol uh, by just putting water in there. It becomes like a ternary system and um, uh, apparently ethanol likes being with, with polar solvents more than with non-polar solvents. So it just makes a mixture with the water. Uh, so that's that's nice and easy to do, uh, but I didn't have a hexanes, so I decided to do it in the in the most meme way possible. I just uh, distilled gasoline. So at this point, I knew that I'm not tasting the end result because hexanes are toxic in and of themselves. But uh, that that's not even the worst part of this. The worst part is you know gasoline. Like there's freaking god knows what kinds of pollutants in there. Apart from you know ethanol and anti-knocking agents with probably like metal complexes in there that I don't really want in my system I guess. I, I will have another video where I actually distill and purify proper solvents from, from gasoline but for this purpose here I, I just didn't bother and I also I didn't have to bother per se because um, uh, where I live, there is a, a big percentage of ethanol in, in gasoline and we want gasoline and, he and hexanes. And actually, funnily enough, uh, ethanol and hexanes create an azeotrope in gasoline. So they just basically, if you get like your average 60 to 80 degrees petroleum ether, uh, you're getting the bulk of the ethanol and the bulk of the, the hexanes. And so that's what I did. And I didn't bother to purify it at all. What uh, this allowed me to do was basically just to uh, dissolve dissolve the precipitate that was on top of my filter papers in in uh, a little bit of ethanol and then and then mix it with my petroleum ether, put it in a separatory funnel, and now all I had to do uh, to do to create my ternary system uh, was to to add water until the phases started separating, and so now uh, we end up with two phases in in the funnel uh, that. The bottom phase should be uh, like e ethanol and water and the capsaicin and as little as possible oils and carotenoids dissolved in there. Uh, while the top phase should have, you know, the, the hexanes and cyclohexanes and isomers of hexanes and God knows what else. And uh, the oleo resins, uh, including the carotenoids. Now, as you can tell, it didn't immediately, you know, separate off the color, uh, all the color and put it in the top face, but it, it, it did help. It started pulling the color and um, almost assuredly did not pull the capsaicin in there. But uh, after a few washings, it stopped pulling the color. So I just caught it a day and drained off the bottom face and decided to evaporate the ethanol and, and water from there. 
Uh, but for just testing purposes, I did leave a little bit of the ternary system in a, a small plastic bottle testing tube thing. And actually, like after a few hours, uh, the, the color had completely been pulled into the top phase. So this just goes to show like next time, just leave it for a few hours probably would work much better. Um, but for, for, the, for this case, it was too late. So I just evaporated everything and then uh, vacuum dried it because uh, so, I didn't want to wait for it to dry. And, and at this point, I had this brown, you know, solid sludge mess that uh, looked horrible. And so I decided to recrystallize the capsaicin out of it. I now had more control over the recrystallization and I decided to do it in, in hot ethanol, 95%. And so I, I brought a little bit of ethanol to, to boil and then I used it very carefully and very small amounts to dissolve all the brown mess uh, in a small beaker. And after dissolving it, I left it to cool down very slowly, like on top of the hot plate basically. And this time I got super lucky with this thing. Like, look at how awesome the recrystallization looks. Uh, like, I, I had the right amount of, of solvent in there. And also, like, even though uh, it's it's not what we want, the, the oils in there create a great contrast uh, between the, the the white crystals and, you know, the redness of the carotenes. So, so actually, you know, for a first successful recrystallization, it also made a very cool shot. So, you know, I'm happy with it. But, you know, after, after the, the recrystallization was done, I, I uh, vacuum filtered it and I started washing it with ice cold ethanol. But, it, you know, like it still remained a little bit brown and I didn't want it to be brown. So I decided to, to, to make a second recrystallization. And at this point, the, the crystallization itself, it didn't look as cool. Uh, but the the solution was much more yellow uh, instead of red and like the crystals themselves you know uh, uh, again yellow like I did wash them a lot with ice cold ethanol again but at some point like you it would start you know dissolving the crystal so I, I had to stop and here we go like we have uh, I guess technical grade ear wax uh, that's what I can describe this as it, it is as, as advertised, it is kind of powdery and, uh, you know, uh, probably would be white if it was pure. The final yield was 104 milligrams, which is an amount. And if we take it uh, in, in context, uh, Carolina Reapers are supposed to be 10% uh, capsaicin in weight. If you, if you take this one paper into account, and I had 15 grams, so, you know, if we assume that my product was pure, which it uh, clearly isn't, it's yellow chemistry, yay. But assuming that it is, just for simplicity, then we have something close to 6.9% yield, which is not noise at all. But, you know, like, it's a thing and it's my first attempt at this stuff, so I'm happy with it. Uh, and to be completely fair with this, this is still a huge amount of capsaicin, even if it's like not 100% pure, even 50, it's still a huge amount. If you look at this one paper from like before quantum mechanics was a thing, like from 1910 or something, they say that one twenty thousandth of a milligram is enough to be perceived as warm in your mouth and one two thousandth is, you know, quite spicy. So, you know, we are orders of magnitude higher than this and so whatever the purity of this is it's enough to to make it very 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 spicy it, it just goes to show that even a, a small amount of of uh, material like this is still a, a lot of molecules that I can do a lot of you know good or bad depending on what they are so you know take chemistry seriously I suppose and be very careful I guess that's the moral of the story and so with this, I leave you and I hope to see you in the next video.